Hello. Now, many, many years ago, in the 60s and 70s, when the Russians and Germans published military manuals for the men that were restricted and they weren't meant to uh, be given civilian circulation, instead of having proper military publishers like they do in Britain and America, most of the communist countries' military manuals were printed by civilian publishing houses. Now, this meant they could be done in the millions and done cheaply, but unfortunately for them, what it also meant was these restricted military manuals often turned up in foreign language bookshops in the UK and throughout the rest of the world. So, because it was a, a civilian publisher, when the civilian publisher kind of boxed up all the books, fiction books, story books, whatever, and sent them to their distribution shops throughout the world, because it was a publishing house, they'd also throw in some of these Russian and German manuals, which they weren't supposed to do, but they were foreign language books, and they were heading for the foreign language bookshops. And so quite often in the likes of London, in the 1960s, you could walk into a foreign language bookshop and look on the Russian shelves and pick up a military manual for the latest piece of Russian toward artillery for next to nothing. And that, that actually used to happen. Uh, one of the books that kind of escaped is a West German book, uh, not intended for circulation, was this one, handy pocket sized thing intended for West German soldiers to identify uh, uniforms, equipment, badges of rank of all the countries in the Eastern Bloc states, the communist countries, just in case they came over that Berlin Wall in the 1960s. This is the July 67 edition, originally published in 1965. This is the 1967 edition, Die Armien der Ostblock Staaten, which is the armies of the Eastern Bloc states. It's the Truppendance Taschen book, which contains organization, tactics, equipment, vehicles, everything you need to know about every communist country that may come over the Berlin Wall. Really, really interesting reading. Um, and it does make you think that if those Russians came over that Berlin Wall in 1967, whether the Western world would have stood a chance. Now, this is just the Russian bit. This is how it's all laid out. You have a kind of little, I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? Probably not. But we'll take a look at it anyway. You have a little line drawing of, this is a Russian, very much in the same way as a World War II poster would have, this is a German, this is a Jap, this is a Russian. You have your typical Russian soldier in his great coat. You have all the, all the, the various aspects of the Russian military. You have who's where, what they have, how many they have. You have everything apart from where they're deployed at. And also you have aircraft kind of insignia as well. So that the soldier looking at that could look up in the sky and go, that's a Russian, that's Albanian, that's Polish or whatever. But just listen to this. This is what the Russians had in 1967. The army, the Russian army in 1967 had 2,200,000 men. They had 45,000 tanks plus an additional 15,000 in reserve. They had 36,000 artillery pieces, 40 panzer divisions, 80 motorized divisions, one mountain troops division, nine airborne divisions. The Marines had 500,000 men, 20 cruisers, 110 destroyers, 100 frigates, 380 U-boats, the rocket troops, ballistic missile people, had 200,000 men, 300 long-range missiles and 1,000 short-range missiles. The reserve army had 20... Now, in addition to all of those numbers, the reserve army also had 20 million men that they could call up. So it does make you think, good job they didn't come over that Berlin Wall back then. And it goes on through... Albania, you know, Albania had 15,000 men, six infantry brigades, and again you've got the little line drawn of this is an Albanian soldier, these are aircraft insignia, and it goes through into kind of how various tank companies are put together, and then for the day it had fairly rare information on communist weapons and 
relatively then unseen rare pictures of trucks, vehicles, missile launches, artillery pieces and surprisingly the Russians were still using uh, trailers, XV2 missile trailers for their sandal rockets. So we'll take a look through that. And also the, uh, the Yugoslavian army in 1967 had a complete division of World War II German 88mm anti-aircraft guns. And you've got sh shoulder insignia, things like that. So we'll take a look through it. As I say, it wasn't intended for publication. It was just intended for the West German soldier to keep in his pocket just in case. So it has a kind of potted history of all the, the then communist states. You have Austria, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Yugoslavia, Romania, Soviet Union, Poland, Bulgarian, and it, it encompasses all those armies. So we'll take a look through this because it is quite interesting. So, by Friedrich Weiner, who was something to do with the West German Army, the armies of the East Bloc states, organization tactics, Waffen und Gerat. The forward, various organisations, how things are put together. Then we have the Soviet Union, typical Russian soldier, all the details, the the industry that the Soviet Union produced back then. This is the composition of the army. Then you have the Air Force insignia. Albania, Bulgaria, East Germany, and also where it's got a communist country, it tells the German soldier how many divisions of Russian soldiers were in the particular communist country. So in East Germany, as well as the East Germans, having 95,000 East German soldiers, they also had 20 Russian divisions based there as well. And 500,000 men in reserve. And again, Poland, the Polish army, had 153,000 men, plus two divisions of Soviet troops. And Romania, Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia had 150,000 soldiers and 1 million men they could call up out of the reserve. Hungary, and it goes on through various organisations of various divisions. A, a pioneer company, a typical Eastern European pioneer company make up. Panzer Company, motorized companies, rocket troops, various divisions. Then we have the weapons, infantry weapons that the German army soldier might encounter on any possible battlefield. They're all Russian for the best part of them in origin. And it's interesting now the Russians had their version of the World War II German um, Panzerschreck bazooka, but the Russian copy had two wheels on the back of it. So you have all these artillery pieces. Artillery. 
some of which captured ex-World War II German items, truck-mounted rocket launchers, Scud, Frog, all, all of the, uh, the missiles have the NATO code names. So Frog, for example, means nothing in Russian. So if you look, we have Frog 4. In Russian it doesn't mean anything. Frog is a NATO code name, which stands for Free Rocket Over Ground. So Frog 4 is tank chassis mounted. Frog 7 is truck mounted. And it's like that with quite a lot of the airplanes as well. So you have again code name Scud, Scamp, Scrooge. And this is the Sandal missile, which has as the carrier the World War II German V2 trailer. Next World War II German trailer. Anti aircraft guns, truck mounted. Missiles, tanks, T-34s, armoured personnel carriers, you have the good old Czechoslovakian OT-810 half-track, modelled on the World War II Hanamag. Bridging vehicles, ploughs, trucks, seal and gas trucks, mass trucks, track cargo carriers, personnel carriers, Tatra trucks. Then you have unusual things like, this is the Russian copy of the World War II Schwimmwagen. And that's the Russian copy of the Duck amphibian. Various bridging units. Then you get onto the Air Forces. Again, they're all known by the NATO code names, Farmer, Fitter. And again, you've got the, the various silhouettes that the servicemen might see them when they're in flight. Radar systems. Soviet soldier in 1965, uniforms, insignia, Poland, Russia, Hungary, etc, etc, so that the soldier could tell at a glance. Useful if there was a war and they captured prisoners so they could tell who they had. And again, rank insignia so they could tell if they captured a communist. What uh, unit he was with. Big emphasis on shoulder board insignia. Going to Yugoslavia. Organisation. Then we have copy of the uh, K98, which is the M48 Yugoslavian. Yugoslavian copy of the MG42, which is the Sarak. Interestingly, an ex stock of German World War II FH 18 howitzers. You have German FH 18 World War I howitzer towed by a World War II American artillery tractor. And they also had the American 155mm cannon towed by the artillery tractor prime mover. And they also had the American M7 Priest. 
self propelled guns plus some Russian things and also a battery of World War II German 88mm cannons plus T-34 85s and some Sherman tanks and also some M47 Patton tanks as well North American Sabres, Thunder Jets, MiG 21s. So, all in all, a handy little book. Not intended for circulation, never intended for publication, but a lot of them escaped into foreign language bookshops in the UK. Really nice item.